still at SEMA 2022, and we've heard all kinds of rumors about this electric Jeep. And to boot, it's a CJ8, which even is an added bonus. So we ran into Carter here, and this is Carter's Jeep, and the story is that it has an electric drivetrain. That is right. Now, Carter, what, what year is the Scrambler? It's an 82. Okay, I, yeah, I was gonna guess. We only have a little window there yeah. where they made them. So it's 82. Um, and besides just being like the coolness of having an electric motor, it's a beautiful Jeep as well. I mean, it, from a, this close, it just looks gorgeous. Thank so it you. looks like you've had a lot of work all the way around in it. Yeah. Now I have to tell you the reason that I was really interested in it is because I have old iron. I have lots of old vehicles and I want to convert them to electric. Now partially that's just because I want my kids to still have them, right. still be legal and still help the environment, all those good things. Um, so why did you choose to do this conversion? I mean, for a lot of the reasons you mentioned, but honestly, it was to do something different. You know, I've, I've had CJs before, I've Jeeps of all kinds, and I've done engine swaps and that sort of thing. And when I started thinking about what I wanted to do for the motor for this one, it was right about the time I started figuring out that guys and girls were swapping EVs mm -hmm. into mm -hmm old cars and I went down the rabbit hole of the uh, the forums online, the DIY EV forums and started doing a ton of research mm -hmm. and uh, you know, what it takes to do it, how much is it, how long does it, you know, how safe is it, those kinds of things. And uh, that's when I got in touch with Electric GT because they were advertising kind of a crate system and that really appealed to me sure. because look, I spent two years doing just the restoration work. Yeah, I, I can tell. I didn't necessarily want to spend another two or three or four years building an EV system. Um, and the idea of having something that I could more or less drop in like you would an LS system was super appealing. Oh, well, sure. And the, like some of the box, great motors and stuff yeah. go in pretty easy as well. But um, I have so many questions, yeah. actually. So did this originally have like a 258 with a carburetor or something like that? It actually like that? had the four-cylinder Iron Duke. Oh, and, nice. Yeah, uh, seized. I, it was a farm truck in Pueblo, Colorado. Mm -hmm. and I'd been looking for a scrambler that I could work on as a project for a few years and got lucky. It hadn't run since 96, I That's think. Great. And so yeah. I was the first person to call him on Craigslist. And I jumped in a car with my buddy's trailer and got down there in about two and a half hours. And how, and how much did you pay for it? Uh, if my wife is gonna watch this. <laughs> Here it uh, comes. I, uh, the Jeep itself as it sit was in Really good shape. I paid eighty five hundred, I think. No, for that's it, great. Which I actually similar Jeeps. I know in Colorado because I'm a Colorado one as well. Yeah. Are going for fifteen, twelve, oh, yeah. fifteen thousand. Price has gone it up. Should make your wife years. feel a little bit better because I think you got a half price deal the, on the, it. The the uh, the yeah, the price has gone up considerably even in two years. Yep, um, that's for sure. And I got lucky because it was a farm truck, and and the gentleman I bought it from had repainted it in like a farm implement paint. You know that so bulletproof. It was, heavy. It was really so heavy. Thick. Yes, yeah. And so it had very little rust that I had to deal with, mm -hmm. which was nice. <laughs> so, so tell me the story. So obviously I, I could just see it from here, like the, the I, can I call it a motor or is it a, a battery? Motor, yeah, or is motor it, is accurate, yeah. So as I look at the motor, super clean. Um, why, what's the name of this company again? I know you just already said it. So it's Electric GT. Okay. Um, so they're, they're sort of at the forefront of EV swap systems. Mm -hmm. So they've got their own proprietary battery systems with enclosures and they do all the wiring harnesses and cooling systems and all that kind of stuff. I mean, okay. and then you can add things. You could do DC fast charging, you can do AC, heat, you know, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. Disco balls and stuff. Disco, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so you called them. Were they your first call or did you call a no, of people? I, 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 cold, I cold called and emailed every manufacturer I could find, you know, EV West and some of the other big names. And, uh, you know, they were all great to, and really interesting to talk to, but these were really the guys that were, we can help you build a crate system. Mm -hmm. Like we, we are already working on a V8 kind of swap platform. You know, they say that this 413 system is about the same footprint of an LS. Okay. And, and, and people have been putting LSs and CJs for decades. So, for sure. I mean, for, sure. for me, that was super uh, attractive. And at the end of the day, I was we were able to drop it in. It bolts up to the factory motor mount locations. Okay, yeah, you, you beat me to the punch on that one. Yeah, the yeah. transmission, factory transmission mount locations. 
So, so amounts to the factory frame. Now, is that a design by them, or is it just for happenstance? Like they built it and it just happens to drop into a Jeep. So or? they they've designed the the mounting, the cradle of the motor, and everything to have multiple sort of motor mount options. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of took that and what we know from the aftermarket of swaps for CJs and came up with a really simple motor mount design that located the motor perfectly. Now you, Carter, are you a, a Jeep enthusiast or is this your first Jeep? I'm or? an enthusiast. It's probably my seventh or eighth Jeep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you qualify. Yeah. You qualify. Yeah. All right. Um, so as an enthusiast, is this the only Jeep you have or how many do you have that aren't running right now? Uh, <laughs> so I, Your wife right now we have, we have a, yeah. I have two, um, I have a gladiator. That's my daily driver Sweet. right now. Yeah. And we have a strict one in one out rule, which I will respect. Oh, okay. You know, we, we only have so like a sixties gladiator or no, it's a, it's a new, Oh, newer okay. One. Yeah, All right. Well, I'll it's still talk to you because you have the old yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have to have something to go to the pick and pull and load up with parts and, for sure. you know, come back with so well let's talk a little bit about weight bias mm -hmm. so when we talked about with well, iron duke it, it, a bulletproof little motor mm -hmm. not exceptionally heavy um and with the long wheelbase of the scrambler um i won't say it was like a, a central weight bias but not super heavy on the right. front um and ls's being like an aluminum small block again not a real heavy so with this one was the weight a consideration or is a is an equivalent to it's, like an LS yeah. or a standard like 258 or something. It's it's a little bit heavier. It's probably totally total you know, 250 to 300 pounds heavier than you know an LS would be mm -hmm. with everything and a full tank of gas. Um, and it's definitely something to keep in mind with a swap like this. As I learned, is you want to position the batteries and the motor and everything to try and keep things as balanced as possible front to rear. And these guys okay. have thought about that. So. The rear battery pack bolts where the fuel tank was. It's okay. about the same, almost exact same dimensions as a fast factory 20 gallon tank. And so I was able to again use the stock location, okay. and mounts, and everything oh, that's for that, great. which is cool. And similar size and dimension, S everything. Similarly, same, almost to the quarter inch, the same dimensions of the 20 gallon tank, which was. So, awesome. so does it come with like a skid plate system or something? Because that's what I would think about. Like, oh, I've got my batteries hanging out. Nah. Okay. Like, so, what's going to happen? No, they they don't manufacture necessarily vehicle specific like mounts and stuff like that yet um, but what they were willing to do is send me all the engineering schematics for mm -hmm. the enclosures and the motor and everything and then I was able to just basically learn Fusion 360 and plug in those measurements and come mm -hmm. up with a factory looking skid plate mount that for the rear battery pack and send cool. it off to um, Oshkut and they bent okay. it up and yeah cut the holes out and I got it back and it bolted right up. That's good. And, and uh, as far as how it fits around, do you feel like it's protected with that skid plate and skid? It, no it is. And, and the, the enclosures themselves, like some of the builds they've done themselves, they only use like the strap mount kind of system. Okay, sure. And so they, the enclosures themselves are thick and sealed up and, and pretty, pretty durable themselves. So I probably went a little overboard even. Well, as far as, you now, of course, I love the environmental, the advancing to more future tech. Yeah. I love that in old vehicles. But as far as just like the drivability, have you really had a chance? And of course, I realize we're com comparing it to this inline four. <laughs> so, but since you're a Jeep guy, you know what it's like to drive a CJ with a 304, a 360, yeah. an inline six. How does, is it feel different? Is it torqueier? Is it? it yeah. So the, this system yeah. has 406 foot pounds of instant torque. Yeah. And it's the most fun I've ever had in a vehicle, I think. And so is it a gut feel takeoff yeah, kind of a I thing? Mean, it's, it's, I mean, if you've driven an EV, it's that same instant mm -hmm. like feeling. And, and it's, it's like nothing I've ever experienced, and especially in a Jeep. Um, and what's cool about this is they have a direct drive system that I think they're getting ready to launch. This mates to, obviously, the factory T5 transmission wasn't going to, it could barely yeah, handle the 258. Just, I was just getting ready to segue into that. Yeah. Um, now, some older Jeep guys are going to be like, well, it's got to have a manual transmission. It does, And, yeah. um, of course, back in the day, I don't go history where we were playing with truck transmissions. We ended up with autos. Yep. Sort of arguments all different ways. Yep. So if you wanted to 
keep a T5 or something in this, it's probably not going to live. I mean, no. we used to kill the third gear and oh, T5s yeah. all the time. Yeah. So what's the recommended transmission behind it? So I did a ton of research and, you know, like I, I live on the forums and ask advice and all that stuff. And so I looked at the NV4500, NV the SM465, um, you know, but those are getting a little bit harder to find, For sure. honestly, yep. and, and rebuild kits are getting harder to find. And these guys, the Electric GT guys actually put me in touch with Silver Sport Transmissions. And I ended up going with a Tremec TR4050. Okay. Uh, which is bulletproof. I mean, I think yeah. it's rated up to 600 foot pounds of torque. And the Tremec guys were great to talk to about it because they're starting to get into the EV world. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, talking to them was really interesting. But I was able to use an advanced adapters off the shelf um, bell housing, made it up directly to mm -hmm. their motor. Uh, and then I was able to adapt it to the factory Dana 300. Okay, that was my next question. Yeah. So we still have a Dana 300. Yeah. The axles, are they still factory? Still factory axles, and I'm sure Jeep guys are going, well, the AMC 20s, uh, the corporate 20s, uh, if you want to call that, is has yeah. some weak points, but it's things that guys have been addressing for years. Well, I'm sure and you so have a solid axle kit. I have a solid kind of axle stuff. kit, yep. welded the tubes. So I put a Detroit True Track in the rear and I actually yeah. love the uh, the AMC20, uh, <laughs> just the big round diff, and I hadn't had a chance to really look underneath yeah. it. So do we have a Dana 30 in the front as it well? It is, yeah. And you have a reasonable tire on there, like a 31? 31, Okay, yeah. yep. Yeah. And so it still looks, even in the Scrambler being long, I feel like the 31 is still proportional to the build. I've always thought 31s for something that wasn't going to do a lot of rock crawling. Mm -hmm. You know, I, in Colorado, I'll I'll take it up and, you know, the mining roads and some of that kind of yep. stuff. and. I've got enough range that I can do that and get back and charge it up and, you know, because that's one question I get is like, how do you off-road it? You're going to plug it into a tree? Like, come on. Like, well, no, that's, but. yeah, there's people that are not up to date with <laughs> right, what's going on. Right, And, and, and the charging infrastructure mm -hmm. is not where it needs to be, but it's getting there fast, especially in states like Colorado. Um, yep. You know, there's charging stations everywhere. So. Well, it will be. And another cool thing, Carter, that we've seen here is some other systems that are built you know, onto suspensions and yeah. centrifugal and things like that that are actually building their own electricity yep. to feed this beyond just everybody saying, well, you have to have solar panels or something like right, that. Right. Um, so I, I bet in a decade, we're gonna be at a point where these are yeah. really efficient and have these huge yeah. ranges. And look, right now, my intended purpose is not to go overlanding in it for multiple days. You know, I think you're right, in three or four years, there will be that capability. It's just not my use case right now, which yeah, is fine. That's okay. I love yeah. that you're on the forefront of it. But let's go check out the interior because yeah. I just have a feeling with this Jeep, it looks stockish, but there is bound to be something cool in here. Yeah, there are. You know, it's it's a set of speed height gauges. You know, they make a really great factory looking um, gauge cluster for this. But they worked with us because they're trying to get into the market too to customize these for some of the EV specific things like mm -hmm. battery temp, motor temp, state of charge, kilowatt power. And they integrated it so that unless you're looking close and you know what you're looking for, mm -hmm. you might miss it. Yeah, I mean, it, at a glance, it it's, keeps the original look, which is cool yeah. for this. Um, now, do they make gauges that are factory looking or did you get the other gauges to kind of look like it? Because I see like the bevels are all like the nice, they, like a yeah, and they've got glass. options, you know, you can do chrome bevels and stuff like that. So they make them to look factory originals, you know, with the same sort of fonts and everything, which is really cool because kind of what I was going for um, was that kind of factory look, but, you know, the information that you'll need for the EV system. Now I see part of the charm of the vehicle, of course, is keeping the stock knobs, things like that. Mm -hmm. I do see a heat and fan switch. Yeah. So does this with the electric motor as Coloradoans that we are, heat's nice. Heat is, heat is um, so do you have electric seats or is it actually some kind of blower motor system or? So what? I have the factory uh, heater core with the blower motor uh, and, and all of that. And to your point about having heat, so the motor and the battery is, a, is coolant uh, cooled and they've got a system built into the kit for that, but it doesn't generate enough heat like a gas motor would to actually blow real heat out of it. Right. And so they have a system built into it that actually has uh, coolant heating in it. And that oh, does two things. That gives you heat, enough heat, 
-hmm. And it also warms the battery up in the winter. So oh, so it's the same thing. It's, so it's cold for it's, you, it's cold for the batteries. It's cold for well. the batteries. And, and batteries like this, and this is true for modern EVs, can't be too cold. It's just not mm -hmm. safe. Mm -hmm. They won't charge and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, that, that does, again, lead into something because I was like, well, sometimes with batteries, it's like extreme heat, extreme cold yeah. causes problems. So it sounds like that's sort of a, a balance yeah. regulator type of system. Yeah, and the Electric GT guys have thought all through all of that, and the system is fully integrated and, and works really well. So normal temperature, say, we'll say like 180 to 210 is probably a, a very standard Jeep temperature. You look right. at it like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. So you said it's cooler than that. What is the temperature? It's probably that? about half that, I okay. would say. Yeah. So. But then it goes through the heater system, blows the heat, heats the heats the batteries, and then is there a step down cooler? Is it just cooling so, through the heating yeah. process? They, so there is a radiator system, and and you have as a as a builder installer, you have the option. You can use your existing radiator. You need two radiators, mm -hmm. and so you kind of have two options. They have small ones that you can you know kind of bolt in wherever you want, which is what I went with. Mm -hmm. um, it, but some people have taken the stock radiator, you cut it in half, you block it off, and then you weld it back together, and mm. then you have two bungs. Yeah. And it's a, but it looks, again, back to looking factory, but not necessarily yeah. anymore. I've been looking at this back, and I know you talked about building this cool box yeah. uh, for the batteries, but I thought you said it was underneath. Yep. But this is a, this is cool. Is this part of that system or what is this? It, it is. I mean, you know, for the scramblers, I love having kind of a utility box back here. That's mm -hmm. part of what this is, is just, you know, tool stores, that kind of thing. It's also where the charger lives. So the thing, you know, when you plug it in, it goes through a charger unit and, and charges the battery pack. So that'll live in here. And there's enough room that, you know, with the electric GT system, if in the future I wanted to add more batteries, mm -hmm. I could potentially put them in here and, and mount them and okay. expand the range, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So that's that's why uh, we did this. And the electric GT guys were kind enough to, you know, use their engineering resources to do a cool design for yeah, me. It's a, it's a cool really, laser cut. Yeah, it is. It's you know. a very familiar, <laughs> yeah, right? uh, iconic um, grill there. So. You led into something else. Like I said, I continue to have more questions. Yeah. They said you can, so with the system, I can be like, I want to add four more batteries because that gives me another day that I can go a little bit farther or yeah. something like that. Is it is it linear like that? Like I can say I can add this battery that adds 25 miles and then I add two and it's 50 or something like that? In, in simple it, terms, yeah. And, and the electric GT guys will work with you on making sure that, you know, what you're adding makes sense for the system. The base system is 53 kilowatt hours. And then, you know, I think they built a Defender 110 that was 85 mm -hmm. kilowatt hours. It's the same system, just more batteries yeah. and more range. All right, well, and this looks like the factory bar. This is a factory All roll bar, it's yeah, factory seats. So it's a really good utility. All right, let's, let's go look at the motor. Yeah. You know, we started, we started here, we went around, yeah. we came back to the most obvious spot. So as I look at this, part of the, the thing that makes this so cool is really clean. And you were talking about the radiator system. Where is this radiator? So the radiators, it's, they're tough to see, but they're tucked in down here. And they're, again, going back to the fact that it doesn't get so hot. You don't need huge radiators. You know, they're about this big. Mm -hmm. And there's two of them and they just tuck them in under there and they're, um, you know, do the job, you know, perfectly well. Now, is this a standard, this size dimension? For this system, yeah, this is the Electric GT's V8 system. They have different size crate systems that people can use for, you know, say a straight six swap or a sure. four cylinder swap into a smaller vehicle. They offer those different levels. Okay. And it's still, I mean, it fits, I mean, it's of course clearly bulkier. <laughs> it is a than little bit bigger, horse, yeah. Uh, the the, the four cylinder Iron Duke, sorry. Yeah. Um, it's bigger, but I still have some places to put yeah. some stuff. I mean, it cleared the factory steering, so I didn't have to do anything to that. It bolted into the factory motor mounts because they think about those kinds of things in terms of optionality there. Um, you know, the one thing that I did kind of have to do differently because an electric motor has no vacuum. So mm. you think about power vacuum brakes, you have to, mm -hmm. you know, some people can run an electric vacuum pump. And I thought about that, but when I sort of test fit this, you know, I have a car, I had a cardboard mock-up of this and I put it in, I realized that a brake booster, you know, big round brake booster wasn't gonna yeah, fit. Yeah, I, I so, see that you would be limited to this. Yeah, here. and so 
what I came up with, and again, this was just a lot of research in the forums and talking to people and these guys, and what I ended up with is an electric power steer, hydraulic power steering pump, mm -hmm. and what that, and a hydraulic brake booster, and so I run hydraulic boosted brakes and my hydraulic power steering off the same pump. That's out of a 2006 Volvo. It's a really nice unit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't pull a ton of power, and it's got enough oomph to, you know, give me power steering mm -hmm. and power brakes. And what I'm hearing is now AMC parts are going to be more available because everybody's doing this. Yeah. Now I get the yeah. power steering brackets that I haven't been able to find so long. Yeah. Uh, well, this is super neat. Uh, is it? What's the? Is there a cost? And I'm not pinning you down to it, but say somebody wants to do this to their scrambler or another light kind body style, yeah. is there a, a tier of different costs and options and things? There are. Yeah. I mean, it, it can go anywhere from, you know, what the cost of like a nice LS swap would be uh, up. And this is a more expensive system, primarily because right now the industry is still kind of in its infancy and, and manufacturing isn't scaled yet. Yeah. But, you know, talking to these guys, they, they really believe that in two or three years it will be to the point where it's going to be affordable to a lot of people, which is a really cool idea. I think, to me. Yeah, I would think if you could get into that $5,000 area. Yeah that this would just take off. Yeah, I mean, because battery be... technology is coming down in price. Motor technology is coming mm -hmm. down in price, so. But that's going to put it into the that window where at like five, 6,000, it's a really a better option all the way around, not only for the clear advantages um, of no gas and the heat and all this other stuff in yeah. the environment, but also it's like, well, why do it? It seems so simple to put in. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. What else? What am I missing that's really cool about this? I mean, it, it's not something that you're necessarily missing, but I get asked a lot of like, oh, well, with this much power and torque, and you had to have do, done something that required a lot of fab work or heavy duty this mm -hmm. or specialty that. And really the answer is no. I mean, this system, it bolted to the factory motor mount location, this factory transmission mount location. Um, again, factory axles with the same sort of upgrades that CJ guys have been doing forever. And, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit heavier, you know, 250 to 300 pounds total heavier than, mm -hmm. you know, a gas drive train. Um, but that's not a ton to the point where you require specialty suspension or anything. So I have a, you know, really popular BDS suspension kit on here. Like a two, um, like a two and a half. Two and a half. Yep. Yeah, the YJ uh, conversion kit. Nice. It's a lot of people have used. It's really proven, and it's more than enough for. Yeah. And the stance is yeah. is beautiful. It looks really good. Yeah. Uh, any, so I put an eighty two seventy four because that's what really belongs here. But is there an issue with cooling because the radiator is down there? No, or anything like no. That? There's no issues with okay. the cooling because it doesn't get so hot that you have to have a ton of airflow. No, for sure. You know, um, I mean, you see, like my, you know, production EVs don't have grills at all. Yeah. You know, because you don't need it necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really cool not to have to, you know, worry about that. Um, and, you know, again, talking about the aftermarket for CB CJs being so good, it's like, given it's an EV, I also wanted to do LEDs. And so I've got Quadratex, you know, LED headlight taillight kit, pulls almost no power and just kind of fits the yeah, sort of it does. EV it resto updates mod. It. It updates yeah, it, but it's still old and cool. Now, yeah. um, Goes to factory mounts. Well, CJ's always had frame issues, so we were always plating. You know, we are, in fact, frames, we used to yeah. build a whole plate kit that would plate that and kind of cure that. Yep. Is that still necessary or suggested? It is still something that you want to think about for sure, given this much power. Um, I was actually fortunate and also unfortunate that when I tore this down and I sandblasted all the crud off the frame, I found it was cracked in a lot of places. It was yep. a farm truck and it was slightly twisted. And so I ended up getting a TDK frame. It's just, for me, the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best fabricator on earth, so I wasn't comfortable welding onto the frame like that. Sure. And so I just went to TDK and got their bolt-up, perfect CJ8 frame. I mean, it's a thing of beauty. You should have just told me you fabricated it. Yeah. <laughs> it looks great. It really looks good. Well, Carter, I, we really appreciate your time today. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, and I love that you are bringing this to market. I've been waiting for this. So um, I can't wait to put these things in my own vehicles, truly. Nice. So I appreciate cool, your yeah, time. Yeah, no, thank you very much. I like, yeah. yeah. Thanks for the tour. Yeah.